Hello friends, welcome all. Let us begin the meditation. By crossing our hands, fingers into fingers. By crossing our legs. By gently closing our eyes. And becoming one with our breath. natural, normal, soft breath. Just feel the air, how it is going in through your nose and how it is coming out. Just be with yourself, friends.
last few seconds, friends. And slowly bring back your awareness to your physical body and your surroundings. Light friends, whenever we are ready, we can place our hands on our eyes for a few seconds. We can slowly remove our hands and we may open our eyes. So, welcome back, friends. I hope you all had a peaceful meditation. And uh, it's a short one though, as we have uh, also another session with Patrici in some time. So coming back to the topic, today's topic is uh, from this wonderful book called The Book of Mirdad by Michael Nemi. So I want to share a little bit about Michael Nemi. Michael Nemi was born in central Lebanon in the year 1916. He obtained degrees in liberal arts and law. He moved in the same year to New York, where he founded with his friend Khalil Gibran a dynamic movement for the rejuvenation of Arabic literature. Nemi returned to hometown Baskinta, where he dedicated himself entirely until his death in 1988 to writing on the deeper meanings of life. His works are acclaimed as classic across the entire Arabic-speaking world. To the English-speaking world, Nemi is known mainly through the book of Mirdad. So friends, if you have not read that book, uh, I recommend you all to take that book and read it. It's a very, very interesting book. I think that was the very first books uh, that I have read when I, I came, I, after I came to meditation. So, so here goes the topic, friends, for today, and it is, where do we go after we die? So this is a conversation between uh, Mirdad and uh, uh, many other uh, masters. So there is this miskatar. He asks, Master, where do we go after we die? But that Mirdad answers, where are you now, miskatar? Miskatar says, in the airy, Mirdad. Think you this airy large enough to contain you? Think you this earth man's only home? I mean, the English is a bit different. However, I'll repeat it again, friend. Think you this airy large enough to contain you? Think you this earth's man is only home? Your bodies, though circumscribed in time and space, are drawn from everything in time and space. So much of you as comes from the sun lives in the sun. So much of you as comes from the earth lives in the earth. And so with all the other spheres and the trackless spaces between. The foolish only like to think that man's only abode is the earth and that the myriad bodies floating in the space are but as ornaments for man's abode and as distractions for his eyes. The morning star, the Milky Way, the Pleiades, are no less homes for man than is this earth. Each time they send a ray into his eye, they lift him to themselves. Each time he passes under them, he draws them to himself. All things are incorporated into man, and man is in turn incorporated into them. The universe is but a single body. Commune with the slightest particle thereof, and you commune with all. And as you die continually when living, so do you live continually when dead. I want to repeat this again, friends. As you die continually when living, so do you live continually when dead. If not in this body, then in a body of another form. But you continue to live in a body until dissolved in God. Which is to say, until you overcome all change. 
Now, Ms. Kastar ask the next question. Do we return to this earth as we journey from change to change? For that, Mirdad answers, the law of time is repetition. What once occurred in time is bound to reoccur again and again. The intervals, in the case of man, may be long or brief depending on the intensity of each man's desire and will for repetition. When you pass out of the cycle known as life into the cycle known as death and carry with you thirst unquenched for the earth and hungers unappeased for her passions, then will the magnet of the earth draw you again to her bosom and the earth shall suckle you and time shall wean you life after life and death after death until you wean yourself once and for all, of your own will and accord. Now there is another person, Abhimar, he asks, has our earth power over you too, master? For you appear as one of us. That Mirdad says, I come when I will and I go when I will. I come to free the tenants of the earth from bondage to the earth. So there is another, another person, he asks, Mikayon. I would be weaned away forever from the earth. How can I do it, master? For that, Mirdad says, by loving the earth and all her children. When love is the only residue of all your accounts with the earth, then will the earth acquit you of her death? Mikayon asks, but love is attachment and attachment is bondage. For that, Mirdad answers, nay, love is the only freedom from attachment. When you love everything, you are attached to nothing. I repeat this. When you love everything, you are attached to nothing. Now, Zamura asks, can one by love escape the repetition of one's transgressions against love and so arrest the wheel of time? Mirdad says that you can attain by repentance. A curse escaping your tongue will seek another lodging when it comes back and finds your tongue coated with loving benedictions. Thus, Love will block the repetition of that curse. A lustful glance will seek a lustful eye when it returns and finds the mother eye brimming with loving glances. Thus, love will stay the repetition of that lustful glance. A wicked wish launched by a wicked heart will seek a nest elsewhere when it returns and finds the mother heart teeming with loving wishes. Thus, love will thwart the rebirth of that we could wish. So this is wonderful, wonderful article, friends, that I wanted to read today. And uh, if there is anyone who wish to share anything, you can go ahead and you can unmute yourself and you can share. Thanks a lot, Madhu. Um, the book of Mirdad is one of my favorite books too. I do remember while reading this book, I read it many lines like you did because each line had, um, had such a beauty in it, something that resonated my heart. I cannot explain that in words because one has to experience it. So this book was a bundle of uh, connections to everyone who will read that. So thank you for sharing this beautiful topic today. Again, it took me back to, to that beautiful book and the experience I had when I was reading that. Thank you. Thank you, Madhu. Thanks a lot, Ron. Thank you so much. Yes. So yes, friends, anybody else? Yes, Lavi, please go ahead. Hi, Madhu. Hi, everyone. Okay. I wanted to say thank you for the meditation. Uh, it was very intense for me. Uh, challenging. And uh, I was crying all the time and my cat came to me and she started to vibrate and then she started to drink my green tea mm. and to eat granium that I have next to my bar next to my bed. So uh, it was a challenge. But I guess like with your support, we've managed to go through it. So thank you for that. 
thank you so much. And have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you so much. My 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 cat my cat now just she just jumped into the water. <laughs> 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 into the sink. <laughs> mm. yeah. Okay, take care, thank everyone. You so much, thank, thank you for you. the thank you for the meditation. I'm going to I'm going offline for now. I need to thank listen you. to some music. Yes, yes. Kisses. Thank yeah, thank you, love. Thank you so much, the best Mita. Yes, friends. Anybody else? Hey, Sharu. Good morning, everyone. Morning. It was a beautiful, beautiful lines that were being read out. Although I haven't got uh, gotten the opportunity to read this book, which I'm going to definitely do. But these lines are really, really very profound, especially the lines that you said that, you know, when you love everything, there are no attachments. So this was the beautiful, uh, because I was trying to understand what he was saying that, you know, loving is freeing the other person. And if you see love in everybody, and when you see that you are love, you are love and the other people are also love. So definitely there are no special attachments with one particular person. You're not attached. You're completely liberated. You are completely free. And you are letting the other person also feel free, be it any, any animate object or inanimate or a living being. So it was a beautiful, beautiful uh, understanding of love also that he gave. If we start actually understanding the, uh, when we start reading between the lines. So beautiful lines. Thank you, uh, Madhu Ma'am, for reading Thank this you. out to Thank us. So beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and the love he mentions, I think it's about the, the unconditional love, you know, like the love we, we always think that I have to love my family, I only love my friends, I only love my job. But here, um, his meaning of love is to the entire, entire cosmos and above. So when you have that kind of a love, then you're not attached, you're not bound to something. So you are free and you make others free as well. Yes, 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 absolutely. Thank, Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Good morning, well, yeah. Morning. It was a nice meditation. I was a bit late, but yeah, it's really soothing. And uh, thank you so much for the books. Because I lost reading the books due to my work and uh, family and, you know, all these stuffs. But now I started thinking to read again, you know, the way you are explaining about the articles and the way you are explaining about the books. And it's so nice, actually. I have, I have to read it again and get into that world of reading. You're inspiring me every day, even if there is no time. Just take a one paper or two papers to just to read on. Really, it's, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I could correlate with the love, but most of the people, they don't understand that uh, when we are trying to love all of them the same way they think in another way, that why is she acting like that or why is she loving actually? Like sometimes I don't know how to explain them, but this, I mean, this is a kind like not, not only me also, like I'm just not loving my family or friends, but I also love all the people who are outside or animals, especially when I go to the zoo, people start looking at me, what is she doing with the animals? So mm. I don't know how to explain them or I don't know how to tell them. And I've experienced that some of my friends started uh, uh, taking the uh, things back because I'm loving with their husbands or like trying to talk so freely with their husbands. Like mm. I was, oh my God, how, how, how come she misunderstood me that way? So these are the things which I really don't know how to how to overcome actually i think and i they, think madhvi you don't have to explain to anybody <laughs> what you feel what you feel in your heart yeah but i was hurted one day madhvi that's uh, that was uh, really i didn't know I'll like she could story, <laughs> i'll tell you a story for this you know like uh, uh, i think for everybody it takes time to get into that uh, that state but 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 now now that you had uh, started your journey i want to i want to tell this beautiful story which i always tell in the sessions about buddha uh, buddha what he was doing is he was uh, doing all his teachings in one one village 
and uh, he has to go to another village. He finished his teachings in this village. He had to go to another village. And uh, while he was walking, he has to pass through another small village. In this small village, people doesn't like Buddha at all. People, people always, you know, like uh, he, they think that uh, this Buddha is manipulating or, uh, you know, like uh, all these things people, people used to think. They got to know that Buddha is walking in this path. So they all come uh, on the road and they meet Buddha there and they, they start yelling at Buddha. They start shouting at Buddha. They, they start to use all the abusive words to Buddha. Buddha did not speak any word. And then he passed to the another village and he finished his teachings there. And he was, he, he was coming back in the, same, in the same road. And when he was coming back in the same road, again, people got to know that Buddha is coming back. They went to Buddha and they asked Buddha, see, in the morning when you were passing through, uh, through this road, we have shouted you, uh, we have shouted at you so much. Why did you not say any word? Then Buddha opened his mouth and then Buddha said, the village which I had been to now, that village, uh, the head of the village gave me some sweets. I took it. What if I don't take it? Whom does it belongs to? So it belongs to the person who is giving. So the whole essence of this story, which, which Buddha was conveying is, only if you take it, it belongs to you. And if you don't take it, it doesn't belong to you at all. Even if somebody comes and says you something, they try to... Until unless it is not a physical abuse, that's fine. But if it is, um, I hear Patrice also saying something like this. He said, you know, like uh, um, mental, uh, if somebody bothers us, you know, like uh, by words, it is our choice whether to take it or not. So it is always in our hands, whether to take it, to, to react or, uh, or to just stay calm and uh, let the moment pass. Because the more we react, the more we react or the more we take in, uh, it's like uh, carrying the huge rocks in our backpack. And, you know, like uh, at one point of time, thinking about all these things, the hurt feelings, we, we want at one time we collapse. So we don't want that, right? So always remember that only if I take it, it belongs to me. If I don't take it, it won't belong to me. If they say anything about you, they can say anything about you because they don't know you. Only you know yourself. So this is what I wanted to share, Madhvi. And um, it's very, very important that uh, we, we practice this. I know it won't happen just like that. It takes, uh, it takes step by step. Uh, like, in a, like in 100 times, you might, uh, you might, uh, uh, you might do it one time. And, and with time, two times you will do. So like that, you will, uh, you will uh, start increasing the the time frame of how 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 cool you are you know like how not to react i, I didn't react at all actually she yes. is one of my best friends and i, I mean, kept calm and yeah, i believe the, in god so yeah the reaction so I couldn't, yeah the reaction is not but really i don't know how person. to explain her actually yes. that was my concern and i don't know how to tell her that see this is a kind of a love but it's not that kind of a love that what you think or what you feel i was I, I don't know how to how to really convey her or how to really and i lost that for nearly 5 to 10 years i think uh, and then uh, like i don't know if she she really realized it or not but this is how i experienced it when you were yeah. talking about the love for everyone <laughs> yeah. i know how i understand but for me, my God is always there to soothe me, saying that it's okay, Madhavi, it's okay, they will understand one fine day. But I lost my friend in that uh, uh, thing when I try to love. So That's sometimes, okay. yeah, you're right, Madhavi, like I, I shouldn't, I, I never react on anything. Because, I mean, uh, you should not take it to your heart. The reaction is not only to the other person, reaction is to that situation that you have created for yourself. Because that that is yes. that you are this carrying, I absolutely yeah that you are uh, agree. carrying yeah. it such long you know you you've been carrying it such long, so we have to understand where we have to drop and where we have to carry. So when we realize that we we become we are like a travelers with less less baggage we can freely go anywhere we want to go. So yeah, this is what I wanted to share. Yeah, thank you. Thank so you so much. much. Thank you.
So wonderful friends, I think uh, I have to, uh, we have to end the session for today as uh, in few minutes, I mean, in 20 minutes, we will be having Patriji in another Zoom link. I'll ask Ram to post it here in the chat. Can you please post it here in the chat? Yes, um, uh, please do join us there. And if you have any questions or if you want to share your experience with Patriji, he will be really happy to listen to your experiences. And, um, and yes, friends, but tomorrow, uh, again, uh, one of my favorite uh, sages or uh, the monks, a silence, uh, silent master uh, is Meher Baba. I'm going to read uh, uh, from uh, read his, his topic. He speaks about male and female incarnations. So this is for day 14, which is tomorrow. And uh, yes, friends. So Ram, did you post it? Yes, friends, please do join us in, the, in, the, in 20 minutes and uh, uh, it will be really an, it will be an interesting session with Patriji to hear him live and uh, to, to ask him any questions we have or to share our experiences. It's a great opportunity. So yes, friends, so see, yeah, it will start in 10 minutes as Ram is saying and uh, I'll be hosting that session. So please do join us and uh, let us learn a lot from Patricia as well. Thank you so much, friends. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.